Good. Push-ups? No problem. Finding an affordable daycare spot? Now that's often an exercise in frustration. Meg Gingrich had her baby on wait lists before he was even born, and the going back to work clock is ticking. Universal not-for-profit childcare from a young age, then maybe it would, but this on its own would not convince me. Not convinced that the promise of free childcare when these little guys turn two and a half is more than just that, a promise. Our plan to make preschool childcare absolutely free for kids in Ontario from the age of... Today's announcement is just the latest big-ticket offering from Ontario's Liberals. $2.1 billion in new funding for programs that will reshape the mental health care system. Increasing hospital budgets across Ontario by $822 million. $2.4 billion for the design and construction of a new patient care centre. All from a party and a leader trailing dismally in the polls. And just two and a half months away from the election. Cue the outrage from the opposition, who call it all a political Hail Mary. She's trying to go and buy votes for with money she doesn't have. These checks are going to bounce. Uh, the people are apparently pretty fed up with the Liberals. I mean, polls continue to show that uh, uh, that people don't want Kathleen Wynne and, and the Liberals at the helm anymore. To be sure, analysts say the number and scale of the Liberals' policy promises are extraordinary, never mind the cost. And they have been resonating with voters. Now, once you compare what they say is important. Problem is what people approve of doesn't always translate to their votes. And then the general sense the Liberals have worn out their welcome seems to overtake that as what's driving people's uh, voter intention right now. Hi Premier, what nice to meet you. As for whether this is all about political survival, Ontario's Premier has a ready answer. Do you see why people would be cynical? I think there's lots of cynicism in politics. You know, I think it's uh, I think it's part of it's part of the political world that we operate in. Um, I'm in politics because I believe that government has a role to play. That we have a role to play to come together and figure out solutions to problems that ha people have in their lives. I sort of cynical as to like whether they would even actually do it, and it certainly is, seems like an election ploy, as far as I'm concerned. Question is, come election day. Will cynicism win out? Joanna Rumeliotis, CBC News, Toronto. Now, Ontario isn't the first province to promise free or universal child care, but the follow-through elsewhere has been mixed. We need to build more spaces. That's part of the challenge. $10 a day child care was a central plank of the B.C. NDP's campaign platform, but in last month's throne speech, not even a mention. Some wondered if the Premier was backing away from the idea, but John Horgan said no, it's still on, but it'll take 10 years to fully implement. Investing in quality childcare can improve the developmental outcomes for children. One province Before over, Alberta's NDP government started a pilot project in 2016 capping fees at $25 a day in 100 daycare centres across the province. But Economically, times have been tough in Alberta, and that's delayed Rachel Notley's promise to move towards universal daycare. They are our future, and we need to care for them, create the environment where they can learn, laugh, and thrive. Hi. My name's Stephen. Hi, Stephen. Can we say hi? And in eastern Canada, the Nova Scotia Liberals promised free preschool for four-year-olds province-wide. That's set to start in 2020. Now, to put some of these numbers in context, consider that in Toronto, the average cost of putting your little one in childcare is about $1,700 a month, or about $80 a day. That's like paying down a second mortgage for some families. And over in Quebec, it's the opposite. Childcare there is heavily subsidized by government, and it's been that way for more than 20 years.